Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 13th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. The morning was very rainy and very, very windy, so I did not go out and do some morning birding. I did stop very briefly at the Braddock Bay South Marina, but uh, just to scope for about 30 seconds because the wind was so strong. I got over to the Hawk Watch and mainly sat in the car while the rain continued, and actually I ended up watching from the car for most of the day just because of those really, really strong west-northwest winds. Now, as we got into the mid-afternoon, the cloud cover did start to break up, and right at the end of the day, it was clearing to almost perfectly blue skies, so it really turned into a pretty nice evening, but those overly strong west-northwest winds kept the flight down. Here we have an immature bald eagle, and this one's kind of a cool plumage. I think this is an older immature. You see it's starting to get the white head and white tail that adults would have. But this one also still has a lot of white on the underside of the body. Normally at this age, the body would be darker and it might still have a little bit of white in the wings. So a little bit of a more white example for this age. There were some small groups of turkey vultures pushing through despite the strong winds. And there was a total of 63 for the day. Towards the end of the day, I wandered down to the boardwalk. And this photo makes it look like it was a really nice day. But what you don't see is how brutally windy it was out at the end of the boardwalk. Here's an adult bald eagle that perched on a branch to eat a fish that it had caught, which you can see down here. And the reason I had walked out on the boardwalk was from sitting in the car looking out over the bay, I could see there were some small terns flying around, and I was seeing some flashes of white in the primary, so I suspected they might be Forster's terns. In this area, we expect two species from the genus Sterna, with common tern being the more common and Forster's tern being the less common which is flagged as rare on eBird, but we seem to get them at the Hawk Watch every year. And I sometimes struggle to tell the two apart, especially when I don't get a good look, so please forgive any mistakes I might make. Here we have a Forster's turn. Notice that as we get out here to the primaries that the wings become whiter than the inner part of the wing, which is more gray, and also notice the long forked tail. Here's one of the Forster's turns catching a fish. Again, notice the whiter primary feathers. Also note that Forster's turns are white underneath compared to common turns, which are gray underneath. And Forster's turns have more of orangish legs compared to common turns, which have a slightly darker red leg color. Here's another look at a Forster's turn. You can see the bill is also more orange than common turn, which has a darker red bill. We see that the Forster's turn is white underneath. Again, we see those orange legs and feet. And we see the long forked tail. And one final look at a Forster's turn, and in this photo you can really see that it is indeed white underneath rather than gray. A lot of times it's tough because of the lighting. You can see there's some shadow here in the body that makes some of it look gray. So depending on the sunlight and the distance, sometimes it's hard to judge some of these features. Compare those birds we just looked at to this one, which I believe is a common turn. So if you look at the upper wing, it's completely evenly gray, both on the inner part of the wing and out here onto the primaries. And notice that it has a forked tail, but it's not quite as long of a forked tail. The outer tail feathers just aren't those long streamer type feathers that we saw in the Forster's turns that were really blowing in the wind today. And one more look at the common turn in a more tucked in posture. Here we have a northern harrier just facing into the wind and hanging up over the marsh. And this looks like an adult female because of all the streaking on the upper breast. Here we have a medium sized hawk that's overall light underneath, somewhat broad wings, a medium length tail. We see a brown head, but mostly white undersides. Can maybe just barely make out dark patagial bars. We can just barely make out a belly band. This is indeed a red tailed hawk. Here we have a bald eagle that's not quite in full adult plumage. You can see it's still got some white on the underside of the wings and a little bit of dark to the tail. And it was being followed by this bald eagle that is in full adult plumage. I took this photo right as I was leaving and you can see that at the end of the day the sky in front of the hawk watch became completely clear. So kind of a day of changing weather from the really rainy morning to cloudy most of the day to clearing for the evening. Taking a look at the eBird list, today I had 39 species, and I should also mention that today was the first big day for Bonaparte's galls with 65. I picked up two new species for the season today with the Forster's turns out over the bay and a hermit thrush afterwards. Taking a look at hawk count for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 63 turkey vultures, one osprey, three bald eagles, one northern harrier, one sharp-shinned hawk, and two red-tailed hawks, 
for a total of 71 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 12,691 and the season total to 20,811. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, rain likely with a high in the upper 50s, winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So normally those would be excellent winds, but unfortunately that rain will probably prevent much of a raptor flight. But if we get some periods where it's not raining, we could definitely get some things like sharpies, kestrels, and harriers pushing through. For Monday, they're calling for clouds early and a little bit of sun later on with a high in the upper 50s, winds west-northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. I would expect moderate migration. And for Tuesday, it's looking sunny with a high in the upper 50s and light northwesterly winds, so another decent day. would expect light to moderate migration. And in the mail today, I received the Kingbird from the New York State Ornithological Association, which they sent me because they used my photo of the lark bunting from the hawk watch last spring. This publication is well put together with a lot of regional summaries and some photos, so if you're interested in that sort of thing, consider joining NYSOA. All right, well, despite it being so rainy and gloomy in the morning, it turned out to be an all right day. I didn't really expect to take many photos, but when I saw those Forster's turns down on the boardwalk, it forced me to get out there with my camera, and I ended up with some decent shots, so I was happy about that. Hope to see you out soon at the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.